Sometimes when we play football manager, we want to play football the beautiful way. Sometimes it happens, and other times it doesn't. But today, I have an irresistible football manager 2023 tactic for you guys. It's free at the back as well. A lot of possession, a lot of beautiful goals. So if you're new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you have your notification bells turned on. Also, like this video as it's going to help the video and the channel grow. You can leave a comment in the comment section. Any tactical recommendations. Now, let's get stuck in. The World Cup has kicked off, but pre-World Cup, during the build-up, I was really, really looking forward to seeing the Netherlands play. So this tactic is heavily inspired by Louis van Gaal's army. So what I'm going to do is um, read a little tactical analysis written by Total Football Analysis. I'm going to give you what I've kind of taken from Louis van Gaal and put it into Football Manager and then in Football Manager. We're going to play two games. We're going to have a look at some of the highlights as well because you really need to see some of these beautiful goals. So without the further hold up, let's read this tactical analysis. Playing with a high block in a back three when the Netherlands get the ball at their feet, rotations, mobility and dynamism power the engine. Playing in a very similar system at Ajax, Timber knows exactly what kind of zones he has to step into playing on the right of a back three. Frequently, he sets up a back four playing as a right back to free Denzel Dumfries as a right winger. But he's also been utilised as a midfielder, playing very inverted and with his back towards the goal. This to get another option behind the first line of pressure. Louis van Gaal also likes to use his goalkeeper to create numerical overloads when the team press them from very high up the pitch. In the middle third of the pitch, Netherlands try to be very fast and direct as they look to dominate the game in the final third, so they have to accelerate possessions to play in the rival area during almost every part of the match. Here, we see one of the trademark movements from the Netherlands as Bergwijn drops off the striker's line to receive. He's smart, so we can't turn and carry. As a result, he decides to play it to the man in front. This time, Aki, who then is going to see Vincent Janssen making the run thanks to the space Bergwijn has created behind him. In attacking transitions, the Netherlands like to give plenty of freedom for the player who just received the ball to carry for a while before releasing it close to the rival's goal. These kind of situations create plenty of chances throughout the game thanks to players like Gakpo who have great balance and composure when running with the ball. But you can also see variations with quick releases for a run in behind. In defensive transitions, as told before, Netherlands are a high pressing team that likes to suffocate the opposition very close to their own box and make man marking press that would block every possible option. However, their rest defence acts comfortably playing in a 3-2 or a 2-3 if Timber joins the midfield, where the excellent timing of Van Dijk is once again important for his Team. That tactical analysis was written by Bryant Marquise over on Total Football Analysis. Don't worry, the link is in the description below, so make sure you go and check it out. But now, what we are going to do is go into Football Manager, have a quick skim at the results that we got at Ajax, but then we're going to play a game with the Netherlands, look at the tactic, of course, and then close off this video by, well, playing another game. So, let's head over to Football Manager. But before you do, Make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like this video as well because that is hugely important for this channel. But now, let's go in to FM. So welcome back my beautiful people and now we're going to go through the results. In the Eredivisie, we won the league, we played 34, we won 29, we drew 4, all 4 coming away from home. Funnily enough, all 4 nil nil draws. But we lost one game again coming away from home, we lost 1-0 to Feyenoord. In the Friendly Cup, we don't care about that. In the away for Champions League, we got knocked out in round 16 or the round of 16 against Real Madrid. It, we lost 4-2 on aggregate so it was fairly close. Close, fairly close, close enough. In the Toto Becca, we were the winners, and in the Johan Cruyff Special Trophy, we were the winners in that. But we can look at some of the team stats like goals scored. Ajax scored 92 goals. Most shots for we come in second, but fewer shots against thanks to our back three. Very solid defensively. Pass completion ratio, we come in third with 87%. But looking at the average possession, we completed, well, we got around 60% average possession. Looking at the most tackles one, not in the top eight. Most dribbles made, Ajax are in third place. Most clean sheet, Ajax, and fewest conceded, 
Ajax looking at the top goal scorers Mohamed Kudos who was our attacking midfielder so the attacking midfielder very important to the system and Brian Brobby in 7th place with 17th goal our left back most assists Daily Blint is also on that list Mohamed Kudos actually had the most shots in the Eredivisie key passes Kenneth Taylor our Roman playmaker makes the list our goalkeeper has the best pass completion tackles one nobody's in the list dribbles made nobody's there looking at the most clean sheets our goalkeeper he was conceded our goalkeeper our xg table in the data hub is also looking fantastic our xg 77.6 we scored 92 goals expected point 79.6 we got 91 points expected to finish first and that is exactly where we finished but we can look at some other stats or some other metrics very very quickly like possession we frequently won the ball but we were also very reliable on the ball as well which is very important for a heavy possession base side looking at the passing as well we made a lot of passes but we were also very accurate looking at the team attacking stats you can see we performed well above the Eredivisie average in all of the good metrics apart from cross completion where we we were just below but then again we don't really care about the crossing well we do but we don't we do but we don't <laughs> but what we are going to do now is play a game with the Netherlands just so you guys can witness the irresistible the beautiful football in FM 23 with the Netherlands we are going to be playing against Denmark we've already played Italy we we smashed them at home we had 20 shots at goal 10 on target Cody Gakpo scoring a double but we are going to be playing Denmark and then the second game for Brazil is likely going to be uh, the World Cup opening game and then we'll play that I will skim the rest and then hopefully we've done well in the World Cup so let's play Denmark let's get stuck in so here is Timber on the ball, plays it to Memphis. Memphis back to Timber. Lovely ball to Karsdorp. It's Karsdorp, he's going to hit it hard and low. Memphis, just wide, just wide for the Netherlands. Here's Kasper Schmeichel with a goal kick. He kicks it long. Hopefully, well, we should win that Virgil van Dijk. He kind of wins it. Here's the goalkeeper, De Lit now on the ball to Timber. Hopefully some patient build up here. Here's Karsdorp. He's running wide, gets the ball into Memphis. Here's Timber. Slow and patient build up. Frankie De Jong, Memphis. Lovely through ball to Cody Gakpo. Oh, we got it. Oh, beautiful football. That is the Dutch total football that we wanted to see. Absolutely lovely stuff. Louis Van Gaal's army. Yeah, <laughs> come on. What a goal. What a footballing goal by the Netherlands. And that is exactly what we wanted to see. The centre back there could have possibly done better there. Number five, Christiansen, but it doesn't matter. Cody Gakpo's pace gets in behind him. What a lovely through ball from Memphis as well. It is Netherlands 1, Denmark 0. Has Frankie de Jong on the ball. Our playmaker, Daily Blint now. Plays it to Malaysia. Here's Malaysia on the ball. He's going to run towards the byline. He gets there. He whips it in. And it's headed out by his timber. Ha, huh. Karsdorp. All alone, son. Top corner. Rick Karsdorp. And it is the Netherlands 2, Denmark 0. Absolute emphatic finish. Again, lovely stuff, lovely build up from the Netherlands. Good defending originally from Denmark, I would say, to get the ball out, but they don't close us down quick enough. And Karsdorp in acres of space just smashes it in the top corner. What a finish! What a guy! So it is half time. It's Netherlands 2, Denmark nil. We've had nine shots, Denmark only having one shot at their XG at 0.0. .0. Four. We've seen majority of the ball, 56%, and we have completed 86% of our passes so far. But it's half time. Things can change. Hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it remains and we can continue beating them convincingly. Also, the pass map is a very, very good sight as well. But here's Frankie De Jong with a free kick. Malaysia and it's, it's headed in. Tyro Malaysia assisted by Virgil van Dijk. I'm not quite sure how Virgil van Dijk there is claiming the assist. But he is. He is. And he gets it. And he is. And he's getting it. <laughs> Frankie de Jong whips it. Okay, so he's one that... Okay. At first, I thought Kasper Schmeichel was the one that patted it. But it was actually a knockdown from big Virgil. The pass map, it, it's a beautiful sight. It is really a beautiful sight. You can see we've got a slight focus on the right-hand side. Though our playmaker's on the left-hand side. Our playmaker is still receiving the ball 
nonetheless. Even though we are using a 3-4-1-2, it looks a lot more like a 3-4-3 three, three, just looking at the passing network, which is a good thing because players are moving Possibly players are rotating and interchanging. So we are, we could be really confusing the Denmark defence here. And well, we are having a good game. They've just had their first shot on target. Now they're second. Hopefully they aren't getting into the game. But here's Gov now for Denmark. Throws it to Ericsson, but Van der Beek originally wins that. Oh, Cody Gapo. If he turns around, he was free on goal. Here's big Virgil on the ball. Plays it to Daily Blint. Daily Blint going to progress a little bit. Here's Timber. Gets his pass cut out. Here's Thomas Delaney. Skov. We shouldn't allow him to run, but we've, we're kind of guiding him. Is he not going to... Memphis. Memphis, son. Put a foot on. Put a foot in there. Oh, that's a very, very poor goal to concede. I think the striker there, Memphis, he should be trying to close him down rather than just running side by side. But it is now 3-1. Poor goalkeeping as well. I don't necessarily want to see that again. But let's watch it again. I think it's just poor goalkeeping. In all honesty, poor keeping. He should be saving that. Here's Ericsson, but the pass gets cut out by Karsdorp. Here's the goalkeeper now. Plays it to Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk to Delit. Delit into Timber. Timber to Karsdorp. Again, slow and patient build up from the boys. Here's Memphis. Plays it back to Karsdorp. Frankie de Jong. The playmaker looking for a key pass. There it is. It's Memphis. Oh, again. Beautifully played. Beautifully worked by the Netherlands from the back to the front. And just like I told you guys, beautiful football is happening today. The irresistible FM23 tactic is here. It's three at the back as well, which is a shock for me. It's a shock. But I really needed to get a three at the back tactic to work. And I feel I've got it there. I feel, I feel I'm on the way. I feel I'm on the way. It is Netherlands 4, Denmark 1. And that wraps up today's game against Denmark. Everybody for the Netherlands playing well, apart from Daily Blint. We kept the ball well. We had 56% of the ball and we completed around 84% of that as well. The XG at 1.92. We had 15 shots, 6 on target. Convincing win for the Netherlands. But what we are going to do now is have a look at this tactic and then we're going to end this video with, well, playing another game, the opener of the World Cup. And then after that, we can see how we did in the World Cup. I did make the point that this tactic is heavily influenced by Louis Van Gaal. You could technically pass this off as the Van Gaal recreation from the Senegal Netherlands game in the World Cup. Well, the Netherlands first World Cup game. And now we're looking at the clusters of progressive passes attempts. And I'm just looking at the Netherlands so on the right hand side. And you can see generally it's more in those wider areas. So when it comes to the football manager tactic, I'm looking to at least play expansive football, at least spread the pitch, at least get the ball in those wider areas. Now that actually might mean to use overlaps to focus on getting those wider players further forward and getting the ball into those wider areas. I also looked at the clusters of all past attempts. Again, we're looking on the right hand side for the Netherlands and you can see how patient Netherlands were with their build up. So the progressive passes were kind of wider in those wider areas, but they're but all pass attempts, you can see it happened generally in the deeper to mid third of the pitch as the Netherlands were patient when building up. Only when they reached the mid to the attacking third is when they looked to progress and play very quickly and direct. But when it comes to building the play, they were very patient with it. To help me decide which roles to use in Football Manager, I also looked at the territories of control. This is just Netherlands. Netherlands out of possession on the left hand side, but we're looking more or we're focusing more on the Netherlands in possession. You can see the back three, Nathan Aki, Van Dijk and De Lit. You can see how wide De Lit was. Usually Timber's role. Timber, I believe he could have started this game, but he went for De Lit, I believe, because they forced Senegal into long balls. De Lit being more aggressive in the air is the reason why I believe he went for De Lit. De Jong covering a lot of area in possession because he was dictating play. He was the playmaker, whereas Bergwijs, he kind of, it was kind of that Segundo for Lonte, picking his moments getting forward, picking his moments getting forward. Daily Blunt on left hand side, he was used as a wing back, but he progressed play more with passes rather than carrying the ball. Whereas Dumfries, he played more as a right winger. Vincent Janssen up top kind of held his line, occupying defenders. Bergwijn dropped back to occupy the midfield or help the midfield build up play, but also help with a quick and progressive play. And then you have Gakpo trying to basically just 
exploit any spaces, created any gaps. He was interchanging with the striker. So if one dropped, then Gakpo can go further forward or he can help with the overloads on the right hand side as well, which you can see a lot of with Netherlands in possession, Gakpo slightly to the right hand side. And here we can also see the average position of the Netherlands side. And you can see on the right hand side how high Dumfries is compared to Daily Blint, which is something that I didn't capture in Football Manager. Both my wing back are on attack because in the game, it just provided better balance. But enough of me talking about what I did in Football Manager. Let's have a look. So here is the tactic. You can see it's named LVG Netherlands 3412, the RDF remix mentality is on balance very very intriguing i just felt again it's all about the balance of the formation and the tactic as well controlled players were moving too advanced too quickly which kind of messed up the build-up play and it kind of meant that van dyke and or any of the defenders were hitting the ball longer than what i really wanted from the boys the attacking whip is set to standard if you really want to focus on progressive play out in those wider areas you can stretch it to fairly wide but again about balance standard felt good to me approach play we are overlapping on the left overlapping on the right we are also playing out from the back passing directness shorter tempo on higher now hopefully the tempo that kind of injects once the ball is in the mid to attacking third now this is one reason why i played the game first just so you guys can actually you guys kind of have that visual in your head, right? So rather than me saying, oh, the tempo is on higher, it's on higher, it's on higher. But then in the analysis, I was talking about how the Netherlands were patient in the build-up. It's kind of hard for me to explain that happens in Football Manager without you guys seeing it. So thankfully, you guys saw the patient build-up that, um, that we used in the, the Denmark game. But once it gets into the attacking area, then things happen with more speed. In the final third, mixed crosses work the ball into the box. In transition, when possession has been lost, we are going to counter press. That's going to be key for A, possession based side, two, or B, I can't remember what I just said. For a Louis Van Hal tactic, we are going to counter press to try and win the ball back. And when in possession, we're not trying to get players further forward instantly. In fact, we are going to hold our shape and get the ball to progress more patiently. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he is going to distribute the ball to the centre backs. Lastly, out of possession, a high press, a much higher defensive line, which I felt was very, very key for a three out the back tactic. Now, I actually started with standard. I would use step up more. I even tried a higher defensive line and it was kind of temperamental. It was inconsistent what I was seeing with the results, not necessarily the match result, but more about the defensive results. And then when I shifted it all the way to much higher and removed that, I felt the team were much better because now the lines are closed. There's a less of a gap between the attacking midfielder and the central midfielders, but also less of a gap between your midfielders and your defense. Trigger press more often prevent to show goalkeeper distribution. Now, for the goalkeeper roles, we do have a sweeper keeper. He's going to be passing it shooter. He's supposed to help with the overloads in the first line. In the middle, we do have a ball playing defender on defend, Virgil van Dijk, think about him. On the left hand side, we do have a ball playing defender. He's gonna be dribbling more. And then on the right hand side, we're trying to replicate that timber role being able to push further ahead, but also go into right back, allowing the right, actual right back to get further forward. So we do have a wide centre back on the right hand side of the three at the back. The left wing back, he's on wing back attack, shooting less often. The right wing back, the exact same. Our two holding midfielders on the right hand side, Segundo, Volante, and on the left hand side, we have a Roman playmaker, Jubilee Moore, kind of replicating Frankie de Jong. In attacking midfield, we have an attacking midfielder on attack, Roman from his position, and the two strikers up top are pressing forward on the right hand side, taking more risk, but also shooting less often. And then for that kind of Memphis or Bergeron role, we have a deep line forward on support, shooting less often now we don't have a second version because i used this or tested this at ajax i believe you have to be a very good technical side which is why i picked ajax but also i picked ajax because i wanted the best stats possible if that makes sense i wanted the team to demonstrate what this tactic could really do rather than go into a team predicted i know i'm i should actually explain this in all videos but rather than me picking a team that's um, predicted to finish seventh or eighth in a possession based tactic it doesn't really make sense because now when it comes to playing the game or even the results i feel it's going to vary so much because other games we're going to have to be reactive rather than proactive and you're not really necessarily going to see what the actual tactic can do compared to if i go to a manchester city if i go to a barcelona we've got the players for that certain type of 
football now if i was doing a counter-attacking tactic or an underdog tactic then it makes sense for me to use a mid table or a team predicted to finish bottom because i'm showcasing what you can do when you are not the favorite but for these tactics these possession based tactics i am trying to showcase what you can do in possession that's why i feel it's important for you to at least pick a good team for these tests so now i've got that out the way let's start off the world cup i believe who are we playing if i go into the uh schedule we are playing ecuador we've got brazil in a friendly but we are playing ecuador so we are going to play the ecuador um someone said i pronounced it wrong in the last video i'll say ecuador ecuador <laughs> we are playing ecuador in the world cup opening game and then we're going to skip the rest to see where we finish so let's get to ecuador <laughs> We have approached the first game of the World Cup against Ecuador and this is the lineup that we are going to go with. Um, I don't believe we had Ronaldo last game but we do have him today. Actually, Karsdorp is going to keep his position or his place. De Frey might be the left uh, side of central defender. Depay possibly swap those two. And I think actually no, we're going to do that. Yeah. So this is the team for today against Ecuador. Let's go. Oh, there's Ecuador with an early corner and the goalkeeper comes out, but he doesn't claim it. Here's the winger now for Ecuador, but Cody Gakpo has intercepted the ball. He clears it. Silly clearance. Who are you aiming for? Here's the Ecuador defender now on the ball, kicks it long and it's finally falling to our goalkeeper. He rolls it short to Virgil van Dijk. He plays it out wide to Rick Karsdorp. Driving, driving down this flank here. He turns back. And he's going to play it. He's not. He's lost it. I'm not sure why he's losing the ball there. But here's Van Dyke now. The game's a bit bubbly. No one's able to really control the game. Here's Daniel Marlin. Finds Gapo. He smashes it into the bottom corner. And it is 1-0 for the Netherlands. Kind of a scrappy goal early on in this, um, in this half. But we will take it nonetheless. Still nice build up. At just about. Just about nice football as well. Daniel Marlin. What a pass to Cody Gapo. But. It was kind of bubbly goal with Rick Karsdorp losing possession one or two times when he could just played it simple. But here is Memphis with a corner. He whips it in looking for, I'm not sure. I think it was Timbal, but Karsdorp gets the ball back out wide to Memphis. He's going to drive towards the box, pulls it back to Timbal. Timbal on the edge of the box. So Frankie de Jong, he smashes one, but it's over the bar. It's Memphis with another corner. He whips it in and Timbal is headed the ball wide. So we are at halftime. It's just 1-0 so far. That one Cody Gapo goal in the eighth minute. We have been sort of the dominant side, but I believe or I feel we can go for more. We can go for more. So I do have to think about a change to make. And it's possibly the passing directness. So attacking with, I'm actually going to set it to narrow, but the passing directness, I'm going to go with standard. I'm also going to trap them in inside so I can try and win the ball in more of the dangerous areas and then we can kind of sort of break from it. So here comes the second half. Here is Rick Karsdorp with a throw in, throws it long into Cody Gapo, and the ball comes straight back to Karsdorp. Here's Ronaldo. Ronaldo finds Karsdorp again. He's having a decent game. Marlon, Cody Gapo. Here's Memphis. Oh, almost lovely build up, but Memphis gets his through pass cut out. Here's the centre backs for Ecuador, plays it to Casado. Casado loses it out to Marlon, but Marlon loses it out to Casado again. Mayhem is happening. Virgil van Dijk heads it to Ronaldo. Hopefully we can gain some composure and play the ball into feet. Here's Frankie de Jong. Oh, I almost said lovely pass, but it's intercepted. Here's Virgil van Dijk. He's going to bring the ball forward. Plays it out wide to Malaysia. Here's Malaysia. Virgil. Virgil? Here's De Fry. Malaysia finds Memphis. He's broken through. That's an awful finish. Awful, awful finish. Oh, the ball's looking for Karsdorp, but he gets intercepted. Here's Timber on the ball. Wijnaldum into Virgil van Dijk. The real van Dijk this time. <laughs> Here's Wijnaldum. Lovely stuff on the ball. Here's Timber. Again, here is the composed football. Rather than... Oh, here's Marlon. Through on goal. And lovely goal from the Netherlands there. Lovely goal. I was just about to say, there you get to see Netherlands actually patient. But if I go to my team instructions, you can see the tempo slight, um, slightly higher. All the way higher. So you can see the patient football is 
in the tactic. And it is 2-0 to the Netherlands. Beautiful play down this right-hand side. There is a focus in real life down the right-hand side against Senegal. Today, it's happening against Ecuador. 2-0 for the Netherlands. Wow, well, Karsdorp is having a brilliant game. Here is a corner. I feel that we're, we're getting forward better and more effectively since these tweaks. Here's Frankie De Jong on the edge of the box. He's going to run towards it and have a shot, is he? He does, but he goes wide. What we can also do as well is tell De Jong to stop shooting. He's had a few now. There's Memphis with a corner. Whips it in and Gakpo has headed, headed it, headed it onto the bar. Oh, look at that shape there. Number four to 16, 16 to 20, 20 to three. Look at the football. The football is just magnificent. It is magnificent. I'm saying look at the football like you guys can see. <laughs> so we are approaching the last five minutes. Ecuador just had their first shot of this half. They've headed the ball over the bar now or over their own bar. And that wraps up today's game against Ecuador. Netherlands 2, Ecuador nil. 61% of the ball that we saw. 85% of the passes completed. Nice XG as well. Hopefully we can go for the group stage, winning all of the games and then have a good knockout stage. So I'll see you when we get knocked out or if we get to the final. Unfortunately, we lost in the semi-final to Spain. It's not all bad news because in the third place playoff, we did beat Croatia 2-1. But looking at the schedule, we beat Ecuador 2-0 like we watched. We then lost to Senegal actually, one goal to nil after smashing or before smashing Qatar 8 won in the final group game. We then knocked out England in the second round. Then we beat Poland in the quarterfinal two goals to nil before losing to Spain two goals to nil. Also, Ferran Torres and Tufati grabbing the goals for Spain. And then we beat Croatia with 10 men to one. Unfortunately though, that wraps up today's video now if you're looking for tweaks you could do some of the tweaks that are done in game so it's trap inside you can also uh the attack and whip set it all the way to narrow pass and direct this on standard you can go with those tweaks if you like actually you know what i'm gonna save this tweak and give it to you guys but that wraps up today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed it don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed you can uh like this video because it helps with the algorithm all that good stuff but also if you have any tactical recommendations you can let me know in the comment section i will see you guys soon stay safe god bless and peace out